you've been in the system. Yep. You have spent time in jail. When you were arraigned, did you pick the Zoom option? <laughs> and did you go with the optional mugshot, no handcuffs approach? Or did you say, I want the traditional experience? <laughs> um, you know, I laugh, but it's quite serious yes. what happens when people get arrested in this country, especially if you are uh, poor, if you don't have the means to um, turn yourself in. Um, and that's the vast majority of people that get arrested in this country. Three out of four people yeah. that are currently incarcerated live right by or below the supplemental poverty line. So we're literally talking about poor folks getting swept up in the system. When I got arrested, they came with dogs. I got tased right in front of my two-year-old nephew. Like, people are getting brutalized when they get arrested. I remember my first time getting arrested was stealing a bottle of Hennessy, right? I was 15 years old, 15 years old. 15, we're in a car, we're drinking, police pull behind us. We get yanked out of the car, and there's a phrase that everybody knows who's been brutalized by the police. Everybody knows this phrase. It's quit resisting. Right. And when they say that, they know that is a green light to brutalize you. Right. That was my first instance of getting arrested, 15 years old, for a bottle of Hennessy, getting beat up by the cops. So, you know, no... So when you see that, when you, when you watch somebody and they say, like, well, you know, if you had just taken money from your charitable foundation and <laughs> bought the Hennessy and pretended that it was an expense for there, everything would be fucking fine. Like, that must be infuriating. I mean, how the great Brian Stevenson puts it, in this country, if you are wealthy and guilty, you're treated better than if you're poor and innocent. We do have two different systems of justice, one for those who are poor and those with resources. And mm -hmm. it's very different. We're seeing that play out right now. I think a big part of the sort of playing down of these charges that we've seen is what the media has done. I mean, I think they were expecting something explosive and not really understood. But they created that for expectation. Sure. For sure. I mean, they were hoping for a perp walk and maybe an orange jumpsuit, but this is a process, right? There's an arraignment, and this was just the first act of what will be a very long and drawn-out process. But to their point, though, this is unprecedented to some degree because of who Donald Trump is. He is a former president, and, you know, I'm a law professor. We don't lead very exciting lives, but... Stop it. I mean, this is the most fun I've had in a while. What? <laughs> We have a long haul to go. We don't know what evidence Alvin Bragg has. We don't know right. whether these charges are thin because we don't know what's underlying them. And so to say, it's a weak case, it's this or that, we don't know that, and they don't know that. None of those people have been to law school, and I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must be frustrating, too.